Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about vector valued functions. So vector valued functions. So vector valued functions are functions that take a real number and send it to a vector. Let's look at two basic examples. So first in the plane, so in the xy plane, a vector valued function would have the following form. So r, and you're supposed to put like a little arrow above the r of t, and that's equal to f of t i hat plus g of t j hat. So this is a vector valued function. Uh, it's written uh, using the i, j notation, right? These are i and j are unit vectors. You can write this in component form using angle brackets. So it's angle bracket f of t, comma, and then g of t. In space, so in 3D space, it's very, very similar, except um, we have an extra component. So we have our vector valued function r of t is equal to, and again, we have f of t i hat plus g of t j hat plus, and then we have another piece this time, we have h of t k hat. And again, writing in component form, we have the angle brackets f of t, g of t, and h of t. So that's how you write down vector valued functions. And again, they map real numbers to vectors, right? Let's look at some uh, pictures so you see uh, what I mean. So in the xy plane, we have the x-axis here and the y-axis here. So an example uh, of a vector valued function could be, um, here's our first vector. That's the endpoint of our first vector. This is the endpoint of our second vector. And this is the endpoint of our third vector. And I don't know what the rest of it looks like, but I'm making this up. But maybe if you were to connect the dots, it would look something like this. So the endpoints of the vector actually trace out a curve. Okay, so that would be an example in the plane. In space, we would have a 3D graph, so a three-dimensional graph. So this is the z-axis, and this here is the x-axis, and then over here, we have the y-axis. And so we would have, um, maybe this is the endpoint of one vector, this is the endpoint of another vector, and this is the endpoint of the other. And so we would have three vectors here. Whoops, that's supposed to be a straight line, and then another vector here. And then we would have the endpoints of the vector, those would be denoted um, by this purple, purple line here I'm drawing. Okay. So it's the same in both cases, except uh, in 3D space, you have that third, third coordinate. A couple remarks uh, regarding vector valued functions. So some important remarks that are worth noting. So remarks. Um, the first remark uh, is that different functions can give you the same graph. So different functions and I'll give you an example, um, can give you the same graph. So can give you the same graph. So different functions can actually give you uh, the same graph. Let's look at a, a simple uh, example here. And this is a, let's do a key example, one that's actually somewhat uh, enlightening. So say we have R of T and this is equal to cosine t, comma, sine t. And I'm going to write it uh, in component form. And then let's say t here uh, is in 0, 2 pi. So this symbol means is in, is a member of, belongs to. So if you remember some trig, um, this will give you the entire unit circle. So the graph of this vector valued function, if you graph the endpoints of all of the vectors of this vector valued function, um, you'll get you'll get the unit circle, right? You'll get a bunch of dots, right? These are the, the yellow dots are the endpoints of the vectors. And you'll get the unit circle, right? So it's kind of cool. Each vector in this case has a magnitude of one, right? Because 
uh, the circle has radius one. So the length of the vector is the radius of the circle. Kind of cool. Um, so if instead, oops, forgot my arrow. I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> if instead we look at this graph here, cosine, this function here rather, cosine 2t, sine 2t. So in this case, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, and then t here is in 0, 2 pi. Except this time the unit circle is traced out twice uh, because we have the 2 here. That means it's traced out twice as fast. Um, so it's the same graph, it's just tr uh, traced out faster. So different uh, vector valued functions can give you the same exact uh, graph. So it's not unique. Uh, the other remark I wanted to make is about the domain of the vector valued functions. This is important when doing actual problems. So the domain, the domain of R is the intersection of the domain of each of the component functions. So of, let me just say, f, g, and h. Let's do an example where we find the domain of a vector valued function. Um, so you see exactly what I mean. It's uh, kind of enlightening. Let's see. So we have a, a vector valued function. Let's see, r of t. And let's make this, uh, let's, let's do 1 over t i hat plus um, 1 over t minus 1 j hat plus cosine t k hat. And so I just made this up. And let's find the uh, domain of this uh, vector valued function. So we're going to find the domain. The domain is the set of all inputs. So it's the set of all t values that we can plug into this expression so that the expression makes sense. And we said it's the intersection of the domain of f, g, and h. So basically, this has to make sense, and this has to make sense, and this has to make sense. Recall the word and leads to intersection. So for this to make sense, uh, the denominator can't be 0, so t cannot be equal to 0. For this to make sense, t minus 1 can't be equal to 0, right? We're not allowed to have 0 on the bottom. So t is not equal to 1. And this always makes sense, right? The cosine, cosine t uh, is a continuous function. It's defined everywhere. It's a beautiful wave function. So the only restrictions we have are t not equal to 0 and t not equal to 1. So we have to take uh, the, the intersection, or we have to combine these statements. So if you were to draw a picture, and you would plot the numbers that you want to throw away, so here's 0 and here's 1, um, then you could uh, graph the domain. So I'm going to sketch the domain in blue here. So it's everything all the way up to 0, but not including the 0. Then you start back at 0, and then you shade some more. All the way up to 1, you don't include the 1. Then you start at 1, and then all the way this way. So we're writing the domain in interval notation of our vector valued function. Uh, starting from the left, we would have negative infinity, comma, 0, parentheses, union, uh, parentheses, 0, 1, right? Just, just straight from the picture, right? Just straight from the picture. Union, and then 1 to infinity. So kind of, a, kind of an interesting example. And the comment about intersection, is, it's, it's really common sense, right? Because for this expression to make sense, for this vector-valued function to exist, each of the component functions has to make sense. Each of the component functions has to, has to exist. Um, let's go ahead and do a simple graph of a vector-valued function uh, so you see how that works. So ex means example. So we have the vector-valued function r of t. And um, let's do this one. So 2 cosine t. I'll put it in parentheses. i hat minus uh, 3 sine t. I'll put it in parentheses uh, j hat. And so we could write this in component form if we wanted to. It would be uh, 2 cosine t. And uh, be careful here. It's negative 3 sine of t written in component form. All right, solution. Let, let's go ahead and graph this. So we'll sketch. We'll do a rough sketch of this vector valued function. So to sketch this, what we'll do first is we'll convert it to what's called rectangular uh, uh, form. So we'll call this piece x. You can think of this as x. And you can think of this as y. Right? So x here is uh, 2 cosine t. We basically have parametric equations now. right? So y equals negative 3 sine t. So we have a set of parametric equations that should give us the same graph um, that r does. 
And now we can solve for each of the trig functions. So we'll divide this first equation by 2 so that we have cosine of t uh, equal to x over 2, right? Dividing both sides here by 2. Likewise, we'll divide both sides here by negative 3. So we have the sine of t equals, um, I guess we have uh, y over 3. You know what? I'm going to leave the negative over here. It doesn't really matter much, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. Uh, so now we know an identity, right? If we square each piece, so we know that cosine squared t plus negative sine squared t, well, that's equal to um, cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And that's equal to 1, right? We know it's equal to 1, right? Uh, but this top piece here, it's just x over 2 squared plus y over 3 squared. And so we're saying that is equal to 1, right? So, so we have that x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. I think I did that in a, in a convoluted way, sorry. <laughs> uh, but this is the graph of an ellipse. So this, my friends, is an ellipse. And so remember, in an ellipse, a is always bigger than b. So a is the square root of the bigger number. So a is the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. And b is the square root of 4, uh, which is equal to 2. And in an ellipse, if the bigger number is under the y, then the major axis is vertical, so it looks like this. If the bigger number is under the x, then the major axis is horizontal, so it looks like this. So in this case here, uh, the major axis is vertical because it's under the y. So the major axis is vertical. So we have uh, an ellipse with vertical major axis. Let's graph it. So we draw the y-axis. We draw the x-axis. So because the major axis is vertical, we're going to go up and down by a. If the major axis uh, were horizontal, we would go left and right by a. So we'll go up and down by 3. So 1, 2, 3, put a dot. And then down 3, 1, 2, 3, put a dot. Then you just go left and right by 2. 1, 2, put a dot. 1, 2, put a dot. Then just connect the dots and make an ellipse. Now there's something missing here, right? Um, there is an orientation um, that you can get. Um, and so it's good to describe it. So to find the orientation, so to find the orientation, you can use a calculator and set your like step, your t-step, uh, to a really small number and, and watch it trace out. Or you can do it by hand. Uh, so to do it by hand, uh, plot points and increasing values of t. So we're going to do it. So in increasing values of t. Why not? I'll just show you everything. Um, so let's do that. Let's make a table of values. So we have t, x, y. And just, uh, just to recall what everything was, uh, let's see. We had, we had x equals, let me scroll up. I forgot. Um, x is 2 cosine t. So x is 2 cosine t. And y was, I believe, negative 3 sine t. I'm going to go back up and look. Yes, yes, it was, right? It's, it's negative 3 sine t. Okay, so these, this is our x and this is our y here. Okay, so now let's plug in numbers. Let's start by plugging in 0. So we get uh, x equals, use a different color here so you can see it. So when t is 0, we get x equals 2 cosine 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so you just get 2. And y equals... Uh, negative 3 sine 0. And sine of 0 is 0, so we just get 0. So we get 2, 0. So, so we're here. This is the first point. Okay. All right. When t is, let's use nice, nice angles. How about pi over 2? When t is pi over 2, we get x equals 2 cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 um, is 0, so this is just 0. And then here we have negative 3 sine pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is just negative 3. So we have 0, negative 3, right? 0, uh, negative 3. Did I do that right? Let me see. So when t is pi over 2, we get 0 for x, right? We get 0 for x. And we get uh, negative 3 for y. Yep, looks okay. So now we're here. So this is the first point. So this is t equals 0, it corresponds to that. This is t equals pi over 2. I just assumed it was going to go the other way. It looks like it's going to go um, clockwise. We should do one more, though. Um, 
So let's do t equals pi, right? Because maybe it does go counterclockwise. It probably doesn't, but whenever you have a circular object, you should always do three just to be safe. So x is uh, two cosine pi. Cosine of pi is negative one, so this is negative two. So we're doing pi and we got negative two. And last but not least, uh, negative three of sine pi. Sine of pi is zero, so we get zero. So this is zero. So we're right here now, negative two comma zero. Okay, so it looks like we're going counterclockwise. It's pretty clear. So you would just draw little arrows like that um, to indicate the orientation. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you've watched this far, uh, awesome. Uh, and I hope uh, you learned something, and I hope it benefited you in some way. That's it.